Jack. Our first stop is going to be in the Little and Terry Forest. Animals here in the forest use their natural colors to blend into their surroundings. They are typically different shades of tan and brown, so you hide really easily in those different bushes and tree lines without being seen. To the right side, that is the Okapi. They were thought to be mythical creatures in Western civilizations until 1901. They have the stripes on the back of their legs, but they are not related to the zebra. They're actually the only known relative to the giraffe. Because the male copy has the same kind of skeletal structure at the top of his head, known as osseguns, and they both have those long prehensile tongues. At the top of the hill here to our right side, these are the saddle built storks. They get their name from the yellow spot that's on their bill. Our wings are about 9 to 10 feet, which is about as wide as that canopy above your head. They're the tallest stork in Africa, averaging a head around 5'3", but the tallest recorded was about 5'11". To the left side, we are going to see the black rhino. The black rhino is the smallest species of rhino in Africa, weighing in at about 3,000 pounds. All right, as our green color, so a really easy way to tell apart is with their mouth shape. Black rhino is a very small triangular mouth compared to other rhino species. Now there is less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world at one point because of poaching out their horns. Because of this, they've rent to different protected areas all over the world and since then have grown up to numbers of over 8,000. To the left side, we're seeing two different antelope species. That pretty copper colored one is the bongo. That lighter tan one is the greater kudu. The bongo is known as the ghost of the forest because their horns are slanted backwards. They move really easily in those different bushes and tree lines without their horns getting caught. Both the male and the female bongos have those horns. The male is just going to be a lot darker in color. That lighter tan one is the greater kudu. They're one of the taller antelope species out in the forest. We each other about five-ish feet. And as the greenest in the forest because the white sun stripes that go down their sides look similar to the sunlight shining through the trees. Wow. To the right side we are seeing this big bang to back pelicans. The big back pelicans don't get their name from any of their feathers. For other being spot that shows up underneath them during mating season, they are colonial nesters that nest of hers about 20 to 500 every single year. We're going to keep an eye out for the Nile hippopotamus. Now the hippos, they use their breathing techniques in quite a few different ways. They will sleep at the bottom of the river. Their bodies actually come up for the air every 5-8 minutes. And also walk from place to place at the bottom of the river because hippos aren't the best swimmers, so it's an easy way to get themselves around. Also helps them to a camouflage technique for them. Not that they have any actual predators, they just don't really like anybody. So the last side we are going to see the Nile crocodile. These guys are about 16 feet long and weighing in about 500 pounds. Please sit down. They're opportunistic predators. They don't take any chance they can to hunt. Wow. Wow. Opportunistic predators are typically seen as very vicious and those guys definitely can be. Now when they eat, they're gonna eat upwards about half of their body weight, so about 250 pounds of food every single time. The good news is they only do the seeding once every few weeks, sometimes every few months. Just depends on how scarce food is in their area. We are going to head on out of the sopping into a typically more dry area known as the savanna. The animals here can have a harder time finding those water sources. One of they can't get that water if you look to your right side, we are seeing this kind of silly like a tree. That is a baobab tree. Baobab trees sold thousands of gallons of water within that trunk. And they're able to retain all this water because they only bloom their leaves about three months out of the year. Animals such as the elephant can function this trunk with their tusks and get water for not themselves, but the only other animals are out there. The elephant can also fully push down the tree. What this does after the water is drained out of it, some animals actually try to make the tree their home. 
If that tree is in full bloom, animals such as a giraffe love to eat those leaves. Seven to four per se, you can see animals down here in the sand as a tree of life. So we are going to see the African wild dogs, also known as the paint dogs. Now these guys they have the highest success rate for hunting, and this because they hunt together as a pack. So it's not a good start. I don't know that after that break until the break drops. Also known as the painted dogs because their coats look like paint is splattered all over them. They can run upwards about 35 miles per hour. Keep that suit up for about three miles until you use their advantage to hunt and stalk their prey. To the left side, we are going to see the sable ants up there. I'm looking around the reserve, and that's because they are known for their strength. Now, in fight-play situations, they are going to fight. They're going to use those horns to protect themselves and their young. The more dominant one will darken that coat. Typically, it's a male. Out here on the reserve, it is actually a female. Up here to the right side, we are going to get to see the Hartman's Mountain Zebras and the Wildebeest. Hartman's Mountain Zebras typically live in the more mountainous area of Savannah, giving them that name. A group of zebra is called a Dazzle. Baby Lamb, brown arm stripes, male tail, hair, brown meat, tire Dazzle. The stripes are like even fingerprints, so no two stripe patterns to ever be exactly alike. They're the smallest of the zebra species in Africa, and also the only species of zebra with a dewlap. This is extra skin on their neck, the extra one creates extra blood flow homes cool down their overall body temperature. And those will be second most densely populated mammal, second to the human, migrating groups of up to 1.5 million every year, about a thousand miles. Up here to the left side, these are the Maasai giraffes. The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world, so it heads about 16 and 20 feet tall. They're gonna eat for about 20 hours out of their day and they will only sleep for about 30 to 45 minutes. They'll do that sleeping standing up just because it takes them so much time moving down. It does mean to become more vulnerable. Now the first thing a giraffe will experience in its lifetime is a six foot drop. It's because mom gives birth standing up. But it'll help kickstart baby's lungs. Baby is up and running within the first hour of birth. Mom is pregnant for about 15 months before she's birth. And baby is born at about six feet tall. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Up here to our right side, we are going to see that African elephant. Largest lame mammal in the world, weighing in about eight to 10,000 pounds for the female, and it's all to 14,000 pounds for the male. They'll eat anywhere from 200 to 300 ish pounds of food every single day. Also, around the same size as a newborn baby elephant. Mom is pregnant for 22 months before she was birth. They do have the longest pregnancy of any animal. Now elephants are what 
we call a matriarchal society, which means that the female is going to lead the rest of the herd. Typically, the oldest, oldest and wisest. Uh, she has a really important job. She marks us where food areas are. She marks us watering holes are. Just in case any of those watering holes have to dry up, she just remembers those baobab trees are. It's a really important job of remembering areas of danger. Danger for elephants is actually different tree lines that be high to them. Found this out because we have a project called the Elephants and Bees Project with the Disney's Conservation Fund. This project started because we found out elephants are being hunted by different African villagers, but they're heading into the villages, actually tearing up those crops. All we did is sent some of our animal researchers and like experts out there to try to figure out we could stop this from happening. As then they found out from some locals that elephants stay with different tree lines around the village because there were beehives in those areas. What they did is they built these special fence with that beehives hanging down for them. A really easy way to keep the elephants out of these areas not cause any harm to them. So not the elephants but also those farmers. They don't really worry about their lands being torn up. The bees are ponders up through growth of those crops the following years. And they need some honey, which those farmers could then sell and create more of a profit. in our bodies. Even with all of the muscles we have together on this shark, their trunk still has more. It's strong enough to push and pull down some of this fully rooted trees, but can also act as delicately enough to pick up a singular berry from a bush without crushing it. to the left side we are going to see the greater flamingos. They're the largest and the lightest in that pink color. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyant. You're going to see the grayish ones on the flamboyant. So that's because flamingos are born gray. It takes about two years to get that color from the baby 13 found in the brine shrimp of the heat. to the east side of the Santa, the first thing you'll notice is this large mud wall. It's going to be a good time for animals such as the white rhino because they like to roll themselves in the sun. They'll harden on their skin and acts large a natural sunscreen for them. Also acts large to a natural insect repellent for them as well. Hiding right back here to our right side, those are some of those white rhinos. We'll try and get a better view of them as we make our way back around. But they are the largest species of rhino in Africa, weighing in at about 5,000 pounds. They get their name from the Dutch Afrikaans word bite, which means wide. They have wider singular mouths compared to other rhino species. Of the five rhino species, the white rhino seem most likely to hang out together in a group, and a group of them is called the crash. They are near sighted to anything that's not very close to them, can be very, very blurry. But surprisingly, that's not why they get that group name. So it does mean they rely more heavily on some other senses, though. To the left side, you are going to see one of the cheetahs laying down over there. She does the fastest animal in the world, getting at the speeds of over 60 miles per hour. They go from zero to 60 in about three seconds. As they're running, they will keep their tails low and close to the ground to help steer themselves. 
The other black spots, they also have black markings on their cheeks. These don't reflect the sun on their eyes so much. And I think have a black paint on their face. You'll see some more of them up here to the left side as well. Now, uh, she does aren't considered actual big cats. They're what we call a lesser cat. They do not roar. They actually make sounds that are closer to your typical house cat, such as a mowing, purring, or a chirping noise. Side, this is the African lion. You might see that lioness laying on the rocks right above him. A group of lions is called a bride. There's about two to forty lions within that bride. It's only gonna be one to two males, and the rest are gonna be females. Females do all the hunting with bride. They'll do their hunting at night. It's because their eyesight is the same as the humans during the day. It's about six times stronger at night. While the girls are hunting the males, they're back in the back of the rest of the bride. One way he's gonna do that is with his roar. Lions are okay. We heard from about six miles away. Here to the last side, we are going to see the warthogs. They're the largest burrow animal. They use their top test for shovel shaped sounds to dig up those burrows. They lay on those burrows, they're test facing out. Their bottom tests are razor sharp, they're going to use them to help protect themselves. Highly intelligent animals also have an amazing sense of smell. They smell about 8 to 10 inches of the dirt, which they use their range by the different bugs and growth that they love to eat. To the right side, we are going to see those white rhinos just in a bit of a better view. I also see the ostrich here to our left side. The ostrich is the largest bird. They also lay the largest egg that you'll be able to see there to your right side. Their egg weighs about three pounds and fully grown person can't sit out there cracking it. They're flat the spurs, they're gonna use those wings to steer themselves as they're running. They're the fastest animal on two legs, you can just beats up over 40 miles per hour. starts to come to an end, you're going to make one of our final stops out here. This is the warden's post here. You can see that she takes care of one very specific type of animal, which is a Nigerian door coat. You'll find these guys in different African village areas because they're very easy to upkeep. Even though they're easy to upkeep, their milk is very valuable. It can be turned into things like butter and cheese. Those items are then sold in those different marketplace type areas, help boost the economy out there. She's like animals and humans can work together to create a better world. So the major creating better world for these animals is with the Disney's Conservation Fund. The Disney's Conservation Fund are our different projects such as the Elephants and Bees projects. My favorite thing that the Disney's Conservation Fund does is that we give grants out to different protected reserves all over the world. So it's a more widespread conservation and production of these animals. There's species such as rhinos and elephants as they're last to bring human activities. Means that us as humans are the ones to protect them. So it's really important that they have those different safe spaces that they can live in all over the world can donate to the Disney's Conservation Fund today. Currently, any donation will get you one of our conservation buttons. Shout out to the animals you're right here today. Disney matches all the donations that go to the Conservation Fund, so every donate how to donate to Some other ways you can help while you're in our parks is making sure you're recycling. Any of the single-use plastic items, soda bottles, water bottles, and adult beverages that come in those plastic cups, those Starbucks cups, all those items can be recycled. And all our trash cans can be recycled by day. They're right next to them. 
very, very close to that. So one of those really easy things you can do while you're in our parks.